Hey everyone, welcome back to InfoGamer. In this video, we are going to show you a little bit more on how to make Pokemon Go in Unity. So in our previous video, we had Charlie create a Chikorita in Maya and she textured it and added a rig and animations to it. And then she packaged it up in Unity and sent it over to me. And now I get to show you the final version of Chikorita with all its animations in Unity. And we're gonna apply it into the same scene that we have with our AR background with our augmented reality background that's capturing from my web camera right now. And once we throw it into our scene, then it's gonna start looking a lot more like Pokemon Go because we're gonna have our Pokemon for one and we're gonna have a augmented reality background. It's gonna be awesome. So Charlie sent me a Unity package, which I put into my file system for our project under my packages folder. It's right here, you can see it. It's called Chikorita, and to import it into Unity, I went up to Assets, and then Import Package, Custom Package, and then I had to find the location of the Unity package, which was under my Packages folder, and then I clicked on it, double click to open it, and then I just imported everything. And since I already imported it, I'm just gonna hit the X, and then I'll show you what was all in this package. So. First, we had our model, our Chikorita model, which has a mesh and different components to the actual model. And it also came with two materials that had two textures that it also came with. One is for the body and the skin of Chikorita, and then the other is for Chikorita's facial expressions. So it has the eyes and the mouth. This package also came with the animations and the animator for Chikorita, which were here under this Chikorita folder, package folder. So we have attack, a bounce, an idle, and a jump animation, and then the Chikorita animator. Then we had the Chikorita prefab, which Charlie compiled with all the assets connected, and then our two textures. So that's everything that came in this package that Charlie created. Now what we want to do is import it into our scene with our AR background. And to get Chikorita to stand on the same perspective plane at all times, we want to create a kind of invisible ground for Chikorita to stand on. And so to do this, we're going to create a new 3D cube. And then we want to first, we'll center it, just zero, zero. And then we're going to actually drop it down in the Y position, probably to negative two. And then we're going to scale it in the X direction, we'll probably do 20. And then in the Z direction, 20 as well. And right now you can't see it in the game view because it's a white cube and our background is also white. And so what we need to do is create a material to apply to our ground just so that we can see the difference. And so I went ahead and created this material, but I'll create a new one just to show you the process. So when you're in your materials folder, you want to go to create and then material, and it brings up with a standard material that's opaque. But what we want to do is change it to cutout and then we're going to change the color to like a brown. You can actually change it to any color you want because ultimately you won't see the color. This is just to distinguish the difference between our AR background and the ground that Chikorita is gonna stand on. And so let's now drag our material onto our cube. So when we created our cube, it should have came with a box collider. This is going to be important to have because we're going to apply a collider on Chikorita and a rigid body and so we want them to interact. Next we'll go ahead and bring Chikorita into our scene. So we'll go to our Chikorita folder and click on our Chikorita prefab and just drag it on into the scene. Then we're going to go ahead and center it and there's a couple things that are wrong. Right now, the model is really big, and so we're going to scale it down, and then also the rotation is, just needs to be flipped around to 180. 
So let's start with the rotation. We'll type in 180 on the Y axis, and then we're going to scale it down, let's say 0.25 for now. And we want to scale it in all three directions. And right now, she's intersecting with the background plane. Ultimately, we're going to fix this, but we can bring her just forward right now so she's not interacting with it. So for the starting position, let's just change this Z position to negative five. And then we also want to bring Chikorita down a bit so that she's closer to the ground that she'll be standing on. So I'm going to scroll in in our scene view. Focus in on her. And then let's just drag her down and see where she's at. Right about there. So if we just change this to negative 1.4, that should work. So let's show you the different animations that Charlie put on Chikorita. So I'm going to go ahead and select Chikorita and then go over to our animation window. And then I'll just play through these four different animations. So the first one is idle. And so Chikorita has kind of got a little bounce to him or her. And then her eyes as well have a little blink. So that's the idle animation. And then we have a jump animation, which just makes Chikorita jump in the air. And we have a bounce animation, which is super cute. Chikorita just bounced back and forth and yeah, it's awesome. Then we have an attack animation where she uses her, her leaf to whip at things. So let's go ahead and add some physics to Chikorita. So with the main parent object selected, we're going to click on add component and then physics. And first we'll add a capsule collider. And now we need to resize it and position it. So in the component for the capsule collider, the first thing that we're going to do is just drag it up in the Y direction. And then we're going to bring it forward in the Z direction because the Pokeballs only really need to act, interact with the front of Chikorita. And so we're going to get the general shape of the front of Chikorita. So let's change the radius just so that it goes out to the width of Chikorita in the X direction. So right about there. And then let's bring it up a bit more and we're going to change the height so it goes from the top of her leaf to the bottom of her feet. And you might also need to reposition in the Y direction just so that it fits correctly. So that's pretty good just for a rough estimate. And it's a little far forward, so I'm gonna scoot it back just so it goes to probably the tip of her nose. There we go. Next, we're going to add a rigid body. So let's go add component, physics, and then rigid body. So if we go ahead and hit play, and I'm gonna pop up in the background, you're gonna see that Chikorita is standing on the ground. And to make sure that she really is interacting with the ground, we're gonna click on the transform tool in the Y direction and just drag her up. And if she plops back down, if gravity pulls her back down to the ground, and she doesn't go through the ground, that means that it's working right. So go ahead and hit play. Now the last thing that we're going to do in this video is make the ground transparent. So we'll go ahead and select our ground, our cube for our ground, and then we're going to expand the material. And then let's click on the albedo color and let's drag the alpha down until it disappears. Now I'm gonna hit maximize on play just so you can see the game view in full screen. And then let's go ahead and hit play and see what this looks like. So this isn't perfect because right now our Chikorita is just standing in front of me because my web camera is taking a video of me. Whereas ideally you would be using a phone and you'd be using your front or your back facing camera to be taking a video of wherever you're looking like a street or a yard or so, like a field and then Chikorita would appear to be standing in that field just like Pokemon Go. And of course the, the angle might not be perfect the way 
Chikorita is oriented, and so we might need to play around with how she's standing, maybe angle her down a little bit or bring her lower on the screen. But ultimately, we're also going to be able to change how far away Chikorita is from the camera, but she'll be in the same perspective plane that we currently have her in, or whichever we choose. So to sh demonstrate that, I can select Chikorita and bring her closer to the camera or farther away. And when we start throwing Pokeballs at her, we're going to have to throw the Pokeballs harder or higher to reach Chikorita if she's further back away from the camera. And if we wanted to bring her down a little bit, we could select her and the cube that she's standing on and just drag them down a little bit and make sure that she still fits in the scene. So that might not be... I think it was actually better where it was. Yeah, that's probably better. And there's one more thing that we can actually change in this tutorial that I just r realized, is that when we made our ground transparent, the shadow that Chikorita is casting on the ground is now going through and landing on our augmented re reality background. And so we can select that plane, and then ch over here in the mesh renderer, we can uncheck receives shadows. Now, when I was playing Pokemon Go, I actually noticed that they don't use any real-time shadows. All the shadows that they are using are baked shadows. This means that they're actually using like a sprite or a plane that has a texture on it of a shadow. And if you look closely, most of those shadows are just circular. They actually don't fit the model itself and they don't move with the model. They might move a little bit when the models jump or scoot forward and backwards, but they don't actually change the way this one does when we turn back on our ground and we animate Chikorita. You can actually see that when she flips her leaf forward, the shadow itself is also changing. So they actually don't use real-time shadows in Pokemon Go. So I'll change that back. And so there's there's a, quite a few things that we're going to be covering in future videos on how to make Pokemon Go, like how to throw a Pokeball, how to have the Pokeball interact with your Pokemon, and a whole bunch of other things. So we hope you enjoyed this tutorial on learning how to import your Pokemon model into your scene. If you liked this video, make sure that you subscribe and stay tuned for all our future videos, and we'll see you next time.